How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Box to Box. The international break is over and it's Chelsea away this Saturday 5.30 p.m. right here at Stamford Bridge and who else to represent Chelsea than my big six brother Matisse? What are you saying brother, bro? We're good. I mean we're at the fortress. The fortress he calls it. I don't know. I don't know how many people are calling it fortress got, anymore. There's but fractures in the fortress. This is our home away from home recently. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. You guys like Wembley, FA Cups, whatnot. It's just, you just hey, can't have more than one home. How many homes do you want? When's the last time you beat us here? It's been a while. It's been a while. 2018. Not gonna lie. Yeah, 2018. You were still in school last time. Maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uni. <laughs> <laughs> Education system. Education system. We'll meet halfway. <laughs> but yeah, it's been mad. There's fractures in the in 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 there, but we. We need to build that back 100% because yeah. you guys have been running them up. I think it's like six six wins out of last seven or something yeah, like that. And, and that what, in all comps, yeah, all FA comps, Cup all final. Comps, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's been mad. It's Even been at awful. the bridge, you haven't beat us since 2018. It's mm. been all wins bar one draw. And that's what makes me weary this weekend because as much as we've got such a great record against you recently, home and away, mm. surely, surely that record eventually comes to an end in some way, shape or form. And we're going to do predictions at the end. Yeah. And I am confident about this game. Okay. But we've beaten you time and time again. I think it's three times on the trot here. There's some a lot of individual errors in those wins as well from us. Like, yeah, the Kante e slipping, okay. Jorginho giving the ball away. Oh, was that for the Eddie goal? Yeah. yeah so I'm yeah. hoping that there's a little bit more resistance this time because you guys have just been able to come here and walk all over us. The, the, the game last season, the 1-0 win, yeah. that was one of the worst performances from us. We like, dominated. Yeah. You, you guys physically, technically just destroyed us. That was one of the most like, energy sapping like experiences as a Chelsea fan yeah, just yeah. know there's just in every single department defense attack midfield we are just getting slaughtered yeah, yeah. it was crazy I was actually frustrated we didn't win that one by more but overall we dominated didn't really allow you to create anything and yeah you know we got the W but listen uh, times are they changing three wins on the bounce now mm. Chelsea I mean it, is it fair to say we're facing an informed Chelsea now I don't want to take I don't want to take it that far I mean <laughs> we've played Brighton at home, which fair, fair enough, that's a cup game, but it's just a tough test. And then the two other teams, Fulham and Burnley, going into those games, I expected us to win and comfortably. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's coming from me when I've watched my team struggle this season against Bournemouth, Aston Villa when we should have got more from that game. Yeah. High high line defences, almost being disrespected at this point because you you think at Stamford Bridge we come up against teams low blocks, they'd be parking it, they'd be cautious, they'd yeah. be they they've played high lines. Times they're, have changed. They're attacking, they're yeah. pressing, they're they're leaving loads of space. I said, listen, if you get in behind, it's up to you to score. I yeah. mean, know you struggle with that, so we're going to leave the space. So it's been a weird season so far, but yeah, the, the results we've had right now have been good, but I have to, at the same time, be honest and say, they have not been at the level of you guys. And you guys have just come off beating City. Yeah. You know, you've unbeaten played- so far. Yeah, you're unbeaten, you've played- And you haven't even been at your best in comparison I, to I'd last agree. year. I'd agree. But you're still unbeaten, so yeah, yeah this is a different level. Talk to me about test. the underlying numbers because I've seen them myself and many Chelsea fans, including yourself on the Big Six, mentioned that the underlying numbers bode well for, yeah. the, for the future. Um, yeah. The numbers tell you that the results will change at some time. Obviously, in the last three, the results have changed. You picked up three wins, but I-, I are you a person that reads much about underlying numbers? You know, it tends to be a new age thing, XGs, XAs, yeah. XGAs and yeah. all of this. Are you someone that's looked at that and said better times are coming or is that too loose of a, of a factor to look at and, and think that things will change? I do like to look at the, the underlying numbers purely because I don't want to be reacting to just results. If yeah, we win, yeah. but we play like crap, I'm mm -hmm. going to say it. Yeah. If we play really well and we're unfortunate to lose a refereeing decision or unfortunate, I'm going to say it. So it provides context. We have played a lot better than the points suggest, but I didn't even need the stats to know that because yeah. I can see it. I can yeah. see that we're playing well and I can see that the only issues are the fine margins, which is which has always been a problem. Final third, putting the ball in the back of the net mm -hmm. after creating an ample of chances, we just don't take them. And that can only fall so much on the manager. He yeah. set the system up, he set the team up. It hasn't been balanced, but there's been injuries. Like Kukurea at right back, I don't expect to see that in this game. Gusto needs to come back from suspension. Yeah. Reese James is training, but I don't want to see a, 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 a Martinelli, the way that he plays as a winger, yeah. to stretch a Reese James it, it coming messy. back. That hamstring, no, we don't need that. Yeah, so, yeah. and you know, there's loads of there's loads of things that we could tweak and twist to try and propel this team and push them on. Mm -hmm. But it has been definitely unfortunate I think to have the points we have but at the same time listen if you don't take your chances who can you really blame it so? wasn't that long ago that I was looking at big chances created number of chances created yeah it might still be the case now but Chelsea so far this season ha you know have created quite a, quite a number of chances yeah. big chances too it's just you're failing to put them away yeah. which can change for the better 
But when I look at the table, like eight games played, 11 points sitting in 11th, one thing stands out, and that's defensively, you've got the second joint second best record in the league, only conceding seven so far. Yeah. Is that the, 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 the platform to move forward from? Or I, do you think you need to release a little bit? Because you have got many quality players in there. You mm. spend a hell of a lot of money, but yeah. it still comes across quite rigid at times. I think the rigidness comes from the fullbacks for me. Colwell playing left back, he's not going to overlap, he's not going to stretch. And then he doesn't provide the necessary support with Sterling or Mudrick to say, OK, I'm a little bit more free now and I'm okay. able to take my man on or I'm able to cut inside. He, they're usually doubled up on because the fullbacks stay in stationary. And then the same on the other side with Kukurea, suspension and injury to the other right backs. Yeah. He's not gonna he's not gonna overlap and go forward. And this this has to change in this game. The, the fullback situation mm -hmm. we can't go with the same fullbacks we've gone with, even though we've won, because I know it limits us. And I know that Palmer, if he had someone overlapping, that would cause even more chaos. And when Zinchenko is on that side, that's the one defender in your team that I'm looking at. He can be, you yeah. know, he can be got at. He can be nutmegged or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we need to be taking advantage of that and stretching the pitch. And when I was speaking to James as well, even yesterday, he was saying the wide areas is where maybe you might be able to get out of Arsenal. Going through the middle with Rice, if you play party, Jorginho has obviously been there past games as well. Yeah. Like your midfield, if Arteta picks the, the strongest midfield, it's pretty airtight. Like how do you get through party and Rice? The answer is you don't. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And especially yeah. when it's Gallagher in the ten, he's had a great you know start to the season, yeah, but yeah. he's not he's not like a creative you know kind of guy that he's gonna like be a, a David Silva or yeah, like, yeah. he's not gonna run. He's not gonna he's gonna run. <laughs> he's not gonna like <laughs> he's not gonna take these guys on in a, in, a, in a technical way and you know bypass them like Eat with ease. It's yeah, not yeah. gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? So the way that we do it has been thriving off transition, counter pressing, okay. moving the ball quickly. Through the, t through, through the opposition and obviously the lack of respect as well. But you guys won't play a low block, so I think we'll get chances. I think you'll get chances. Yeah. There's a few names I want to talk about because, I mean, it, it seems like it's all changed at Chelsea all the time in, yeah. in, in the last year or so. Let's start with Pochettino. He mm. comes in um, highly regarded by, by many for what he done at Tottenham. It, it hasn't worked that since Tottenham for him. Yeah. But he's at Chelsea now. A lot was made about Chelsea bringing him in. Mm. And so far I guess it's a bit hit and miss yeah which is to be expected mm. I think with the amount of injuries we've had as well I sympathize with him because he's never been able to have some consistency with this team okay there's always somebody else on a knock on a niggle setback and then whatever you were building is now breaking and you've got a reset yeah some things like chill at left wing for me have just been like in my opinion inexcusable as to I don't understand the logic I try to always find the, the logic in the manager's what he's doing because he's the one that's, you know, yeah. he's the one with the badges. But with Chilwa at left wing, especially when you had an option in Ian Matson, who's not really a left winger, but he's more fluid, he's more yeah. interchangeable. He's, yeah. he's, he's a player that in the attack doesn't make the team lopsided. You can play, to that yeah, role, you can yeah. play through him more. So that was a strange decision. But everything else I've been able to understand, haven't always agreed with it. Yeah. But I think if he can start getting his players back and have some sort of, Continuity, Lavio, I haven't even seen him, this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and Cuckoo's yeah, not I even made his him. debut. Badia Shill's not here. So we've got great players that are available, but it's it's not just about the the, the ability of the player or the, or the profile. It's, it's also about, is your team from back to front, is it consistent in what it's trying to do? Do they have relationships, chemistry? And yeah. we don't have that. So that's the Time problem as well. That, I guess. Yeah, because there's a lot of good teams in this league. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've got Aston Villa with Diaby and Watkins as a front too. I'll take that. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of teams would, would swap their, their attacks, no problem with mm -hmm. that. So the, the quality in this league is getting closer and closer. So now it's about systems and chemistry and doing things just... A bit like, of a cutting edge. Yeah, cutting edge and just doing things off the cuff and not having to constantly change and chop. And that's where that's where we've come kind of stuck a bit. So these other names, I'm going to group them all together because you spent a hell of a lot of money mm -hmm. on these three names. You spent a hell of a, not, a lot of money on a lot of players, but these three names in particular, one, Mudrik comes in in January off the back of many rumours about Arsenal and you know he's the next in line to be Arteta's next man yeah Caicedo who we bid for in January <laughs> but you got the deal done in the summer and Enzo who come in in January got three big big signings three of the biggest signings in Premier League history financially yeah so far Mudrik mm. miss yeah. Caicedo we're still very early, early I'll, too I'll early. say that eight yeah. games in and Enzo, who has received some praise, rightly so, I think he's a quality player, mm. but still hasn't really found his feet at the club yet. I'd say with Enzo, people are going to have to kind of see, unfortunately, that goals is just not going to be his mantle. Like he's one of these deep lying playmakers that are, they do the work that 
a lot of people don't appreciate, mm -hmm. but it's very integral to the way the rest of the team clicks. And I think if you have those Palmers and those Nkukus in the attacking areas, those guys are the ones that will look to you for the goals and the, yeah, yeah. the assist, the GA in those areas, then I think people won't look at Enzo as much. As long mm -hmm. as Enzo, when given the opportunity, can be a difference maker, whether that's passing, you know, it's me and pro clubs all over again. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's that's really the role. Does he chip it all the time as well? Yeah, he does. He loves to chip it. I'm not gonna lie. And and you love to get onto him about it as well. And I'm like, yo, you're not appreciating the work. You're not understanding. Through, my guy. You need to, you're getting the GA, and that's what you want Enzo to do, but you need to appreciate me. Ah, I'm, no I'm switching it, you know, playing it. You was the MVP yeah, last yeah, time. Yeah, doing the played, build up, so. it's important. But um, with Caicedo, he's started to get a lot better as, as the season's gone on. He didn't really have a proper preseason, so he did for a few clangers in the first few games and he was yeah. looking rusty. I have no doubts about this player. The, the ability and the level that I saw last season from him and even for Ecuador in the World Cup, I know this guy mm -hmm. is, is, is worth, yes, he's overpriced massively, but he isn't nowadays. Exactly. We needed him. Like, yeah. it's just sometimes you have to pay. And Mudrik, Mudrik is also improving, you know, in the last couple of games. Fulham, he scored, um, scored for his country there, his first international goal in, in the international break. And again, he's one of those players that He's, he's 22, but he has such little experience. It's At almost the experience of an 18 year old. Yeah. Like the fact that that's his first international goal yeah, and he's like crazy. one of Ukraine's main players. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show how, how yeah, yeah. lack of, how, how little this guy's really been, you know, in, in this on space. The scene. Yeah, 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 on the scene. You know, for Shakhtar, he's, I wasn't really watching them games. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie, so yeah, I didn't yeah. really know too much about him. So he's kicking on, but I can see some, some raw potential there. So yeah, there's a lot, there's yeah. a lot, of, um, there's a lot for these guys to, to live up to and there's a lot of pressure. But I think I think they will. I think they will come good towards I, the back end of the season. I we'll think to better. agree with your assessment. I mean, if I was to pick one of the three that I'm pretty sure is going to make it, it would be Enzo. Yeah. But I do like Kai Seder a hell of a lot, and I don't know what's happened to Mudrik since since signing for Chelsea. Mm. They, I, I saw some great things from him previous, but yeah. like you said, not enough experience at this level, especially. So maybe maybe time is of game the time is key as well. Yeah. Like he's been given a couple of games in a row, and he's starting to slowly show some momentum. When he came in last season. The club could never have been more unstable than it was. So yeah. I was like, I'm not even going to judge you off this absolute train wreck. Everybody's poor right now. Nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. You've had about three different managers in your first six months. It's insane. Yeah, it's Lampard, bad. Bruno for one day and then Potter as well. It's been crazy. So talk to me then. Um, Saturday 5.30, who is your key threat? Who do Arsenal need to nullify? Who do you need to have a big game in order to, to take three points? Cole Palmer. Yeah? He's the difference. When he's... When he's played for us now the last couple of games I've seen a different type of team not obviously the opposition is not the best but it's the way we play we give it to him and he's he just assesses the pitch mm -hmm. he knows what's around him he's got a vision he's got a picture yeah and we haven't had a player like that for a while before Renzo as well yeah where it's like they actually can pass the ball properly like there's some clear technique Technical weight of ability, pass yeah. you know putting some pace on the ball but knowing how much to put on the amount of times we had just wrongly weighted passes to it's like Goldilocks, bruv. <laughs> Trying to get into the bed, bruv. It's, oh, it's too hard, it's too soft. It's, da -da. it's like, bruv. It's like with the, with the pudding. It's, it's crazy. Like, we were just all over the shop. We yeah. couldn't control ourselves. We didn't know how to how to create opportunities, clear cut like City. And you could tell that he's come from the academy because this guy, he plays like a City player. So yeah. he's he's crucial. If, if he can pick up that pocket that Zinchenko will be in and run him up, then, then we have then we might have something. That's going. probably the worry because yeah. yeah, Zinchenko likes to float, and obviously that's helped us a lot mm. um, in the last year or so. But there's also times where him not being there or him being there and his lack of defensive ability awareness has cost us. But yep. I agree on Cole Palmer. He he he, he looks good yeah. for sure. 100%. Um, less pressure on him than the other three we just mentioned, but he does look good. Mm. Arsenal now, obviously, we don't have the official news on Saka mm. whether he'll be starting the game. But let's just say he. He starts. Let's mm. say we've got a full strength team. Partey's back, Martinelli's back. What Arsenal player do you need to keep quiet? One Arsenal player you need to keep quiet in order to be confident getting out of here with, with all three points? Kai Havertz? <laughs> I don't think you need Is to he keep him. quiet? He's, he's keeping himself quiet He's already quiet? Okay, he's I'll, I'll, quiet pick, I'll pick moment. someone else. <laughs> no, but seriously, no, he has to be quiet because if, if he comes here and actually makes noise, Oh, wow. <laughs> this could be the start if, of something special here. If he came here and scored, oh my days. I don't even want to know what would happen in my fan base. It would Give be- Give the Adebayo knee slide to the would, fans. It would go off. <laughs> it would go off. So that can't happen, but- This is my home. <laughs> <laughs> nah, can't, that can't run. Kai, nah, nah you got to do it nah. for us. No, 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 no. The, 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 the images I'm seeing in my head right now. No, 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 no. He needs to just go under the radar like he does. Silence. Don't do anything. Don't, don't do even anything. don't don't go anywhere. Don't even try it. Um, it's for fun. you guys, funnily enough, you know, you know, who I'm worried about the most, Saliba. Yeah. Yeah, Saliba. Because if we don't score, we lose. Okay. This is not going to be no no. Yeah. 
there will be a goal. And if we don't score, because Saliba is on a masterclass like against Man City, then what do we do then? Because because this guy, he's got no weaknesses. Yeah. And my problem is with us is that we've defended well this season, but we've also made individual errors, mm -hmm. lapses of concentration. Yeah. And when the when the team doesn't take advantage of its chances, you're just inviting in pressure at some point in the game. Yeah. We've had good 20 minute spells, 25 minutes, but at some point Arsenal are going to be on top yeah. and they're going to create. And then the defense will fold at some point because it's just overwhelming. And, and you guys, you will take some chances. Do you know what I mean? You're not, you're not like us. So Saliba is my biggest problem because if he has a masterclass, that could that could set the tone for the game. Yeah, no, and you know what? I get it. First time someone's ever mentioned a, a defender mm. or Saliba as the key man, but I completely understand. I want to hear your key man on the night or, or the late afternoon for Saturday people. Mm. Saliba for, for Matisse. Cole Palmer for Chelsea. Mm. Who do you think is the key threat for Chelsea? Who is our key threat come this Saturday? Let's move on to predictions now. Yes. You're the home team, so you lead the predictions. So let me know, bro. What, what are you going with? 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, yeah? That's as good as That's I'm... a safe one. That's... It's not only safe, not only am I on the fence, <laughs> as, as Tobes would say, <laughs> but that is as good as I can realistically ask for. And yeah. when I said it on my own video, like a week ago, Arsenal fans in the comments are like, we're going to riff you. like. Why are, you, why are you even trying to be unbiased? I said, unbiased? I said, a draw. <laughs> is this where we've come? I said, a draw and I'm being biased? No. 1-1 one, one is as good as I, can, as I can really ask right now for this team, especially with all these injury updates every minute, somebody else is set back. If we get a point, I'm not going to be happy because I always want to beat Arsenal. But with your record and where you are in the league unbeaten, a draw is not a bad result at all. No chance. And it would be a bad result for us, especially coming off the back of beating City. We yes. do expect to have, get another win at the bridge and, and keep it rolling. And then we've got Newcastle in a couple of weeks. But we'll be here for box to box for those games anyway. So you've gone 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I'm going 2-0 Arsenal. 2-0 Arsenal. Well, why do you make that face? Not even a goal for us. Listen, you just said Saliba's the main man, so, you yeah. know. But not even like a Gabriel hot-headed moment. Listen, Has he been rash recently? Any? No, no. Damn. No, I mean, like, look. We, we Declan Rice supports Chelsea, maybe. <laughs> something know. for us. I don't know about that. You got that. something for us, Declan? I don't know about that. You, you, you do love this place, you know. Your dad was a season ticket holder. Don't forget. This is this this could be yours. He can come and make his dad proud here on Saturday. It's an opportunity, bro. It's come and make his dad proud. Put Chelsea to the sword, Declan. <laughs> we leave here with three points. You don't have to make it obvious. Give your dad a call and say, you we have, move. You don't have to make it obvious. Little, just little pass. It's an accident. Things happen. <laughs> Long look how far Chelsea have fallen. Asking for asking <laughs> for opposition players, players to scratch that wall. <laughs> look how we far don't need Chelsea your help. We'll be fine. <laughs> All right, people, listen. Big up Matisse. Make sure you subscribe to Matisse's channel. He mentioned he's got a video coming out with James. It, mm. it probably will be out by the time this video is out. I'm gonna put Matisse's channel in the title. So make sure you subscribe. Always doing content. He's got multiple Arsenal previews out. He's always doing content with Arsenal fans. This is AFTV, so go support my brother. And obviously the big six too, you know what it is already. Hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, show some love to Matisse, show some love to the video, and love for the love people. Peace.